Hello, hello. I can. Okay. Yes. Thank yep. you. Yeah, she's here. Yep. I do not see Greg Elkins. Is he on? Joe, I see Robert, William, Travis, Daniel. I see, I don't have a video image for Magistrate Davis and I don't see Greg Elkins. Oh, there he is. Are you there, Chris Davis? There he is, Magistrate Elkins. We're all here. Okay. I'd like to begin with a historical prayer. This is from the words of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Meeting? Yes. This is from the words of Frank for Franklin Delano Roosevelt shortly before D-Day. Help us, Almighty God, to rededicate ourselves in renewed faith in Thee in this hour of great sacrifice. I ask that our people devote themselves in a continuance of prayer. As we rise to each new day, and again, when each day is spent, let words of prayer be on our lips, invoking my help to our efforts. And O oh Lord, give us faith. Give us faith in thee, faith in our sons, faith in each other, faith in our united crusade. Let not the keenness of our spirit be dulled, let not the impacts of temporary events, of temporal matters, of but fleeting moments, let not these deter us in unconquerable purpose. Help us to conquer the apostles of greed and racial arrogance. Help us in the saving of our country and into a world unity that will spell a sure peace, a peace invulnerable to the schemings of unworthy men, and a peace that will let all men live in freedom reaping the just rewards of their honest toll. Thy will be done, almighty God, amen. Now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for one under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm now call the meeting to order and ask the clerk for the roll. Magistrates Graham. Thompson. Uh, here. Constantopoulos. Here. Blanton. Here. Davis. Present. Elkins. Present. It appears we have a quorum. We'll now move on to item number five, adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. There a second. Second. Second by Magistrate Graham. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion aye. carries. Item number six, consider approval of the minutes from the August 27th, 2020 fiscal court meeting. Do I have a motion? That was Robert. Do I have a second? Second. 
And that was Magistrate Davis. Any discussion? Judge, I have one thing. Um, at the end of the meeting, just before we went into closed session and magistrate comments, I'd ask that it be noted in the minutes that the jail submitted their monthly report. And unless I missed it, I didn't see that. Anymore. Okay. Let me look here. I had that in my minutes. So I apologize. We'll get it fixed. It's not in what we have, is it? We'll accept that as a friendly amendment. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. That motion also carries. Um, there is the public comment feature um, on the chat for those who are on the Zoom meeting. Now move to item number eight, review of the treasurer's report. Any questions for Cheryl? I got. I have a question. Cheryl, can you come to the screen? Yes, sir. Uh, again, I apologize for not asking you this earlier, but since we didn't get the packets till so late, I didn't have the opportunity to get through everything. But nonetheless, I know that we uh, approved Magistrate Elkins' incentive back in August, and that line item twenty-one twenty still has no claims against it. So I just wonder. Where that uh, where that money was deducted from it, I, I can't find where that was paid from. Okay. Uh, have you received that yet, Magistrate Elkins? I have not. I have not. Okay, so we approved, but it hadn't been cut. Apparently think, not. I think that's correct. Right. That uh, I haven't been inputting the payroll, and I just checked with Janet, and she hasn't input it. We'll have to locate the letter. And we'll make sure that's taken care of this very next payroll. Okay, I just that was early in August. And I just assumed it had been paid. Okay, thank you. Well, they waited for it to be a. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Anything else? That's it. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to item number nine consider approval of the transfers. Do you have a motion? I don't have any transfers in my packet, so. I believe Cheryl provided one this morning. You may have not received it yet, but I'll tell you what it is. It's one short one. It's a transfer from line 01-4909-000, transfer out in the amount of $150,000 into line 03-4910-000, for the transfer in $150,000. And that is a uh, transfer to basically um, for the jail, part of the allotment that we gave them in the budget. Judges, that will take us to 350,000 for the fiscal year, correct? And that's, yeah. that's uh, half of, or almost, actually it's more than half of the budgeted amount. Do we typically, uh, it is helpful if we know what line item that money is going to be transferred into. I guess we'll do that with a later transfer, is that correct? I, I, I thought, are you talking about specific line items for the jail? It, That's correct. Wouldn't we have to populate those uh, line items with some funds? I yeah, that's, uh, I don't think that, uh, I think that we set those line items in the budget and I would assume that they'll be funded um, but according to how the bills come in. But that's really, that's a little deep in the woods for me right now, I would say. Do you have any comment on that, Cheryl? Yes, sir, I do. Uh, what we're doing is, it's not that their line items in the appropriation side are short. It is that their uh, revenues coming in are not sufficient to cover things. In other words, the money's not in the bank physically, so I can't write checks or that makes sense, Carol. Thank you. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I didn't understand your question. I don't suppose no, it's, it's, it's not, not an not issue. A, it's not a well phrased question, Judge. So. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Who made aye. the motions on those? That's a good question, Michelle. Nobody. Nobody oh. did. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you went straight to discussion. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, can I get a motion, please? 
It's all moved. Is Thank there you. a second? Motion by Blanton, seconded by Constopolis. Okay. Thank you. All in favor, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. <clears throat> Item number 10, consider approval of the bills list. We have a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? One question, uh, and I don't know if we have the uh, interim fire chief available or not. There's a repair to an F-350 for $5,212. Uh, it's a 2011 model truck. Is that the one she, that, uh, Cheryl? I think it's a pretty big repair. Do you have the bills on that? I know that uh, there was a particular bill that I requested Chief Puckett get uh, two on. And I think that might be it. And that was the lower of the two estimates. Who was that made payable to, please, real quick? Uh, Walter Frazier. Okay. I've got it. <laughs> uh, there were several things on it. He's got a detailed, an itemized list of what everything that to comprises the total bill, the parts, the uh, labor. Do you see if there was a uh, estimate from Paul Miller attached to that as well? Yes, I do see that. Yeah. The estimate, let me see if the last page has a total on it. The estimate from Paul Miller was $19,295.24. That included sales tax. It's just a pretty, pretty large bill for a 2011. I think eventually we may need to look at something there, Judge, because we may be throwing good money after bad. I, I don't know. I'd have to know more about it. That's a, that's a pretty large repair. Hopefully, and I'm not sure which uh, truck that they're planning on replacing, but hopefully Gary can help us with some CSEP money in regards to replacing one of those. I think he has plans uh, for one truck for the city and one truck for the county. But we'll I see. think er Ernie Alton's would have asked the road department to look at some of those repairs too, rather than rather than shipping it out. I don't. Maybe they did. I don't know. Just uh, that I don't know either. All right, Judge. Thank you. Further discussion. Seeing none. All those in favor, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion also carries. Item eleven. Presentations regarding tax rates for fiscal year 20 slash 21. Uh, we'll start off with uh, Becky Kissick from the Clark County Health Department. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, on June 18th, the Board of Health actually voted unanimously to maintain the 4.6 cents per $100 of assessed value for all property subject to taxation rate. Um, that is a rate that I know for the three years that I have been here, we have held steady on and that has not changed. Any questions for uh, Becky in regards to that? I do have a question, Judge. Um, and, and I know I think you and Magistrate Constantopoulos sit on that board, but I'm just curious and I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, was there any consideration or even a discussion about possibly lowering that tax rate a little bit? Judge and, and Magistrate, I don't wanna talk over you, but what I will share, um, so I think this has been a year for us to truly take a step back from the Board of Health's perspective. The Board of Health made some very challenging decisions um, actually in October of 2019 to discontinue some service provisions, mainly our home health program. Um, this is a year that we are continuing to really assess what that looks like, what that means for us, as well as ways in which we can increase efficiency and effectiveness. So while we have considered that, I think this is a year for us in transition and growth that we're going to continue to evaluate and reassess. But that is, um, that is on the table. It's something that we have talked about. We just didn't feel comfortable with it this year. Thank you. 
Any further questions for Becky? I will note just, uh, I did a little research yesterday on progressions of these tax rates um, over about the last 15 years. Um, if you look at the health department, their rate at that point in time was 3.2. It's currently 4.6. That's all I've got on that for you, Becky. Next, uh, Julie Marushkin from the Clark County Public Library. Am I pronouncing that right, Julie? Yes, very good. Okay, I thought I was, but I wanted to make sure. <laughs> no, you're good. Thank you. Um, on August the 19th, 2020, the Board of Trustees voted to adopt a rate of 6.0 in real property and 9.59 cents in personal and of course 4.9 in motor vehicle and watercraft. This is a reduction from last year's 6.2 and they did adopt to keep the same rate at 9.59 in real. So this is part of a plan to stabilize and continue dropping back on the tax rate wherever that we can. Well, that's certainly good news, at least to my ears. And do we have any questions for Julie? Ms. Julie, if I'm not mistaken, that's the third year in the row that it has been dialed back a little bit. Is that correct? Um, this is the... This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I believe this is the, I think this makes the seventh year that it has dropped. So it's been dropping steadily wherever we can, wherever the board can make that change since 2011, 2012. Oh, okay. So we were able to drop debt as we went, which, um, helped with the expansion that we did in 2008. So fortunately, it's um, we're able to offer continue, continuing services and expanded services. Excellent, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, if I recall correctly, um, I think the library rate at one point was over seven and today it will be going down from six two to six. That's correct, it was seven point, the last time it was set over seven was in 2016-17. Okay. Any other questions for Julie? Okay, Shonda Johnson with the Extension Office. All right, thank you guys for having me this morning. Uh, the Clark County Extension District Board met on August 19th uh, to establish tax rates for the 2021 fiscal year. At that meeting, the following tax rates were approved to be submitted to fiscal court. Uh, the real property rate of 3.221, personal property of 4.755, and motor vehicle watercraft rate of 1.75. And so we, we just really appreciate your all's continued support of the Clark County Cooperative Extension. Any questions for Shonda? Does that, Judge, I have a couple questions. Uh, Ms. Johnston, does that represent, uh, maybe you said that and I just missed it. I don't think so. Does that just represent no change, uh, any change on any of those rates? Correct. It maintains last year's rates. <clears throat> Was there any consideration given to uh, lowering any of those rates? Any discussion of that? Or what's the, how, how did that come about? There was... Yeah, go ahead. I, I made a motion to lower the taxes, but it failed. I what, Ms. Johnson? What at this point? You know, I've heard different figures. I mean, I, my understanding is the extension office has a fairly significant cash reserve uh, built up over the last several years. What what is that reserve at this time? You have a ballpark number for us. Um, the Unrestricted reserve, which has to do with our basically emergency fund, is our operating budget, um, which is about a million dollars. 
940,000, something like that. Anything and then else have, in reserve at this point? Mm -hmm, and then we have capital improvement funds um, set aside, and I believe they are about 750,000. Well, I think that's, I mean, just my opinion. I, and I appreciate what your agency does and the services that you offer, but that's a, you got to understand, that's a pretty significant reserve for a governmental body to size the extension office. And I just, I just would encourage you and your board at least next year to, to consider dialing that rate back, those rates back a little bit, because, you know, one of the things we've talked about in these court meetings is these, even if the rate stays the same for two, three, four years, there's still a creeping effect on property owners and taxpayers because of course we know where assessments are more likely to go up than down. You know, your home assessment, it's almost always going to go up at least every few years. It's not going to go down. So even if the rate stays the same and it's, it's better than, than the rate going up, <clears throat> the taxpayer is still going to be paying more over five years, 10 years, 15 years, whatever the case. So I just would, uh, I would ask you all to consider next seriously consider next year dialing those rates back. I mean, we, we talked about this board in these meetings. I, I really appreciate what the library board has done the last couple of years and, and the library administration living within their means and living within the revenue that that's collected uh, because, you know, we've got a lot of people in this community that are really in a, in an economic crisis. You know, we've a lot, we hear a lot of talk about the pandemic, but we need to be also talk about the, burden that people that are laid off or under threat of layoff or they've got a small business that's struggling. So I appreciate the fact that you haven't raised the rate, but again, I just would encourage you to look at that a year from now or when that, uh, when that time comes next summer. So that's all I have, Judge. Uh, may I speak to that? Sure. Okay, so that is definitely, we, we appreciate and we understand that, you know, as a Clark County citizen, I, I pay those taxes as well. Um, and the, the issue that a lot of times, at least what our board discussed, had to do with the fact that um, the University of Kentucky is also going to experience those same types of hardships. And so the burden that the um, university puts on the way that the cooperative extension is funded, um, that is going to trickle down um, to our offices. Um, they have been clear about that with regard to the um, kind of the budget cuts that have been asked from, from the governor and all those. We actually just got an email yesterday on some of that. So that was one of the things that our, um, our board kind of discussed just with this year with the uncertainty and being concerned as to what those numbers look like. Um, I do think that there was a conversation that was had about you know, the idea of, of reducing those rates in the future um, as soon as we can figure out what the University of Kentucky will be doing um, with what our expectations are. So, but we do hear that, that concern and uh, we thank you for that. Thank you. Um, just the, the same progression in regards to the extension district. 15 years ago, the rate was 1.6. Currently it's 3.2. Any other questions for Shonda? Okay, thank you Shonda. Moving on to item number 12, consider approval of an order setting and levying tax rates for 2020 on all property subject to taxation in Clark County. I'm going to make a suggestion to the court. I will propose a tax rate on real property moving from 0 0.090 down to 0.087. Um, in regards to personal property, moving from 0.1119 to 0.1100. You read that one again, Luke. On real property, a decrease from 90 to 87. Yeah, I got that. On, on personal property, a decrease from 1119 to 1100. And if you do the math on those, well, actually, I'm going to make that as a motion and see if there's a second. What about the motor vehicles, Judge? Motor vehicles. 
I believe those are set by the state and we can't okay. change. We those. don't we don't have any Correct. control over that, right? Correct. So do I have a second? Second. Okay, for discussion, first of all, let me say, well, those are the numbers I introduced because those are the numbers with the increase in the economy that we saw last year, even including the last three months of COVID. That's as close as I could get with fairly even numbers to us breaking even. Um, if, if the fiscal court so chooses to go further than that, I will not vote against it. So if anybody feels, feels like they wanna make a motion to, to cut more, you will have my support. But um, in order to break even, basically we would, by my calculation, bring in less than uh, around $2,000 or less, less than we did last year with those two numbers. So to give you yeah, an idea, uh, go ahead, Master when, Del. When you, when you say break even, I assume you factored in the uh, potential uh, expenses at the uh, detention center for the year. Uh, uh, basically, this is just a straight tax comparison for last year to the county taxpayer versus this year on what we would bring in on real property. Uh, regarding the detention center, um, you know, it's my hope that we won't spend significantly more money this year than we did last year. And I think if you remember last year, what we spend close to 1.2 million, well, yeah, 1. 1. 1. 1. 2. and uh, you know, based on the current progression, uh, I think that's fairly reasonable. Now, could things change? Sure, they could. But uh, the way I see it, we know last year that the PVA <laughs> estimation went up close to three percent. We don't know what's happening next year. We can address that next year if we need to. And what we also should keep in mind or what I keep in mind is, you know, we've got a, basically a surplus if you take all of our accounts and reserves into account that gets close to $5 million. So I think we we should have, without causing we any undue that, stress to the budget. Have we seen that surplus uh, shrink in past? It has shrunk a little since uh, COVID, yes. Uh, I, I agree with your assessment. I don't think the expenses at the jail will be, at least it doesn't look like they'll be more than they were last year so far. Uh, the jail has done a pretty fair job at managing the COVID issues uh, and lack of state prisoners and other county prisoners. I think they are, they do have some, I think probably have all they can get, to be honest with you. Uh, but I do know that revenues there are gonna go down. So that's my only concern. I'm, I'm certainly not speaking against the tax decrease. I just wanna make sure that we've uh, taken everything into account. And I will say just in regards to the other taxing districts, none of them raised taxes, one of them cut taxes. Even the school board um, has decided not to raise taxes this year, but one thing, just looking at this 15 year progression that I don't know that a lot of people are aware of that I wish more people did understand out in the community. If you bought a $100,000 house in 2005, and if it increased in value a little over 2% a year, which is really close to what the PVA assessment generally is gonna be, right now that house would be worth about $150,000. I know looking at, at my own property, that's pretty close. So if you had this house in 2005, your total tax bill would have been $571 just based on the county taxing authorities. Not talking about the city, not even including the state. Today, that bill would go from $571 to $1,300. And that's basically from mostly compensating rate increases and property value increases. So your taxes have more than doubled because of what's called the compensating rate. And there's a lot of people out there who feel like the compensating rate is, is, a, is just breaking even. It's not. The compensating rate is a tax increase. And if you take a compensating rate year after year after year, well, you find out in 15 years your taxes have more than doubled. It's just like a mortgage that amortizes again and again and again. Each year it's 2% on top of 2%, on top of 2%, on top of 2%. 
but I know that's that's something a lot of people don't realize. Something I wanted to point out. That's how the taxes grow as fast as they do because of compensating rates. Any further discussion? At, at least since I've been on the court, I don't think we have uh, an taken advantage of, but accepted the compensating rate. I think we've always declined that uh, because we knew that was a tax increase. Uh, Judge, but to be, to help ease my mind a bit, um, I'm thinking about the, uh, the surplus that, that we've discussed. And part of those monies are like road department monies and, and other funds that, that we don't really have access to, to pay our bills with. If That's you correct. deduct those funds, how, how much is the surplus at that point? Well, I know we have over a million dollars in just straight reserves. I would, I would ballpark it um, probably at about between 1.5 and 2 million. And I would also say that we expect to get 1.2 million in COVID funding this year. So you think it's going to be ballpark two and a half to three million, including the COVID money? Yeah. It, excluding the COVID money, that can you tell me what decrease that fund that that uh, general fund has seen uh, over the past year? Hmm. I'd have to I have a budget statement from sure. a year ago to tell you. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're not declining at a million dollars a year and we only have a million dollars in there. That's just the only thing I'm looking at. Gotcha. All I can tell you is I believe when I walked in the door, it was about 3.8 total and now it's about 4.5 total. But I don't, I don't know the exact breakdown. If you want me to get you that information, I can probably have Cheryl go grab an old report. That's okay. I, I I've got one. Uh, you, give me a, you give me a second, Mr. Duffins. I can find it here. It'll just take me a minute. And again, I'm not being difficult. I just want to not to suggest that we're doing that, that we're doing anything irresponsibly. I just want to make sure that, that we are. Have, thought of everything. Paul Daniels looking for that. Can I ask a question to fill in the time here? Sure. Have you projected the remaining revenues we have from other sources for the remainder of the year with regards to uh, what you call the break even? I would say it's fair to say I'm relying on our budget projections from when we voted on the original budget. Um, it's really hard to project at this point, but I can tell you that I ticked all of those down when we did the original budget. Okay. The, the, in 2019, Major Scott, where he's gone? No, I'm, I'm here, Daniel. I was just reaching in my files, digging for a treasure. <laughs> okay. in, in, in 2019, the total amount in all the funds was 3.8 million. Yes. Uh, and then the actual general fund was 2.4 million. Now, of course, that's the end of the year once the tax revenue comes in because we don't get the tax revenue until the end of the year. So that's why it's only at 1.4. And then we also transferred, if you remember, a half a million dollars into the reserve. So the special reserve fund back in 2019 was 5 million, uh, or excuse me, $540,000 and now it's at 1.3 yeah. million dollars. Um, yeah, and, and, and you helped me with the uh, with the uh, tax uh, timing of the taxes too, that helps a bit. So. And, and one thing that I just want to add, Judge, I, I mean, I can support this, your numbers are, are adding up here, is that we also, when we set the budget for the revenue, we set it at the, the revenue, expected revenue at the uh, 9.0 rate, uh, and that was the revenue that we were expecting to generate, and basically going to the 8.7, if, if I'm quoting that number correct, will still generate us that same amount of revenue, plus or minus, you know, a thousand to two thousand dollars. Yeah, basically, the in our budget, the property tax number is two million, and this is projected to bring in 
about two two five, almost two hundred fifty thousand more than that. Now, granted, that would be assuming a one hundred percent collection rate from the sheriff, um, and you know that's that's not reasonable. But um, if you take it down to what it looks like, it'll be it should still come in over two million. Because our collection rate over the past years has been around what 88, 89, 90 percent in the ballpark of 90 percent. Yeah, there's some, uh, and I'm not sure why. There's some reason that other taxing districts, I think the library said they have a 97 percent. I wish Julie was still on here. Oh, there she is, Julie. Um, oh, you're muted, you're muted. Sorry, our average is 97.3 over the last 10 years. Do you have any notion as to why the uh, rate from the library would be 97% and for the fiscal court, the collection rate would be closer to 90? I couldn't tell you. Okay, well, that's something we'll try to figure out between now and then. But I can just say based on last year's numbers compared to this year's numbers, we should break even on property and um, real property and personal property based on those numbers I put out. Now the other numbers, um, yeah, I'm relying on our budget estimates, but on several of those, I estimated them about 20% down to begin with. So how far down do you want to go on them? Uh, I have no further questions, Judge. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you folks. I think we did the taxpayers a good service today. <clears throat>
feel like I, I feel like we talked about it in the uh, in the uh, fiscal court meeting as well. But uh, Dan, uh, Major Constantopoulos, uh, I think, explained what our thoughts were pretty well, and that if, if we do have an employee who would come to us with years of experience, either operating a piece of equipment or uh, 20 years of fire training, we may want to allow the uh, the department heads the flexibility to give them a bit of an increase, I think, and we capped that at a dollar an hour, if I remember correctly, and as I read it here, I think that's the way it reads too. Capped at a dollar. And so if the starting pay were $11 an hour for a firefighter, if he comes to us with 20 years of experience, we, that would give the fire chief the flexibility to offer him $12. Should he choose to but it would not exceed the rate of a current employee with similar experience correct and it would have to be it would have to be verifiable correct that's right verifiable experience and again as magistrate constantopoulos pointed out and and i know you know this magistrate blanton uh so i say it for the public more than for your benefit it would have to be approved by the fiscal court when it when it is so. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Judge, thank you for the red text. That was very easy to see what was changed and what had been navigated. I appreciate that. And only I'm on board with both those changes. I just want to ask it where we stand on the holiday situation with the animal shelter. I have a note on that that I was going to read during the comments. Okay. During magistrate comments? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want me to go ahead and read it now? Well, I just want to know if it's going to address that or if we need to do it now in the code. <laughs> Oh, I, I think my thought was, and I think we discussed this in the last meeting, that we would just do it by yeah. orders and we didn't have to do it in the code. The road, I'm sorry, not the road. The uh, animal shelter director, Ms. Uh, Wills, indicated to me that it does say in the administrative code, forgive me for not knowing exactly where it's at, that the holiday must be approved by the fiscal court. And if that's the case, then we need to address it now. If you can do it administratively, that's great. I'm just more curious if you'd looked into that and if you can do that. Well, my thought was to do it by order before the fiscal court. That that was my thought. I mean, granted, granted, we missed holiday. the last holiday. Okay. I think we're allowed so to do that under the admin code. Time. Say that again, Travis. It would come before the court each time that it happens. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. That satisfies me. Any further discussion? Yeah, Judge, I do have one thing. I, I, Magistrate Thompson pointed it out, and he is exactly correct in that uh, the uh, red line Doing the red line on these things makes this uh, much more easy to see the changes as opposed to laying the two side by side and going word for word to find the change. Uh, uh, I appreciate that being done. I think it does provide a, a greater level of transparency to anybody who would want to look at these documents. So thank you for that and, and to your staff for doing so. I imagine that was easier for Janet to do with fewer changes. <laughs> <laughs> any further discussion seeing none all those in favor respond by saying aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed aye. that motion also carries <clears throat> item number 14 <laughs> consider approval of the second reading of an ordinance relating to providing for a refund and or credit of occupational license fee for new employees as part of an economic development project by m s Machining, Inc. So Second. Davis and Constantopoulos. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Item number 15, consider aye. approval of an order relating to the registration and administration of the dead animal composting project. I have a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Yeah, uh, Judge, this is a lot of work has gone into uh, filling out these applications, and uh, uh, I have I have done a lot of these uh, energy and environment cabinet applications, and I understand the uh, level of uh, detail that must be presented and the amount of work that goes into it. And I want to commend uh, Road Department Supervisor for doing that work, along with the grant application. Uh, those are two 
very thorough, very in-depth and complicate or aggravating, tedious, I guess is the right word, application. So well done. Any further discussion? I will just say that uh, in general, I see this as, as our potential avenue um, to continue to provide dead animal removal and other services to the farmers in Clark County who are in need of this assistance um, without you know, causing extreme strain on our budget. So hopefully, you know, along with this grant money, we'll be able to work something out. Um, I'm actually hoping to reach out to the extension. Uh, my understanding is that uh, if you can include an educational component, which I think we can factor into this program, then the extension is free to provide some, some of their funds to help with the dead animal removal and the composting as well. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get some help from them uh, as they, that I think this clearly fits their service area and, and the folks who's, whose needs they're looking to help. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Okay, Constantopoulos and Elkins both second at the same time, so who gets it? Give it to Magistrate Constantopoulos. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir, ma'am. Okay. Item number 16, consider approval of an order to award courthouse repairs to Casey Creek Construction in the amount of $84,000. Do you have a motion? Motion, please. Magistrate Blanton moved. Is there a second? Somebody? I'll second for purposes of discussion. Magistrate Davis seconds for purpose of discussion. All right, discuss. A um, couple questions, Judge. It, was this uh, was this the only bidder? Did we have other bids submitted? I'm just curious how that process unfolded. Robert, why don't you go ahead and address his questions? Well, we bid it last year. We only got one bid. We bid it again this year and only got one bid. Uh, I mean, if you've got someone else who wanted to bid it, they were certainly welcome to. Uh, and, I don't, I'm just, I'm just curious, just asking. Uh, a second question is, have they, I know there was some mention in one of these documents, might've been a memo about proof of insurance and workers comp and so forth. Do we, have they submitted that yet or have they? Not until he's awarded the bid. He can also, if for 2% more, he can also provide a surety bond. If you want to increase it 2%, he can provide a performance bond if you want to do that as well. But once he's awarded, he'll be glad to provide insurance, which he currently has. County Attorney Elkins. Have you had an opportunity to review this contract document, whatever you want to call it? No, I didn't actually realize that there was a contract attached. Um, if you want to give me just a second, I'd be glad to look at it. I saw the bid, but I uh, just saw these things quickly. I'll tell you, um, you know, it, it'd be possible uh, if you were going to uh, make a motion in a second to accept that, uh, you know, to do that based on uh, my review of the contract uh, and it, you know, being appropriate. My only concern is, you know, I've heard a lot of war stories about construction contracts that get change orders. And I want to make sure that's something that we nip in the bud on the front end instead of the back end. So if you could review that, um, Robert, would you would you accept his suggestion that we uh, pass it based on county attorney county attorney's review and approval? Well, if he, if he has any questions, I mean, Mr. Uh, Tucker's glad to talk to him and change anything he wants to. I mean, I the only thing that's really not covered would be any window repair, and those appear to be in pretty decent shape. I mean, the the windows on the walls, not the gable ends. Of course, we know the gable ends are covered, uh, but I mean, if he, uh, I think this was just his proposal. If, the county attorney has an alternate document he'd prefer signed. I'm sure that Mr. Tucker would be amenable to reviewing it and going along with it. 
Because he, he's he been off off who also offered the, the performance bond. So, I mean, we can go okay. any way you want to, Judge. All right. I, I think Robert's saying he'll accept that as a friendly amendment. Um, do we have any further discussion? Good. I've got a couple questions. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, there's a delay. I apologize. I'm not talking, trying to talk over anybody. Um, originally, the 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 bid was going to be to repair the the damaged soffit and wood and so forth around there. Uh, Magistrate Blanton, we had just had the courthouse painted what three years ago. Uh, are we repainting the whole courthouse again? To make it white as opposed to pink. It's got a definite, it doesn't match the tower if you notice. We've had several comments on that and it's peeling in several different places. I don't think it was properly primed and scraped. And But now that's up to the court. I'm just trying to make it, make the building look like it should for the citizens of Clark County. And then the, the other question that I have was, is that uh, this is based on some information that I'd read here. I guess it was in a memo. They're going to have to shut down the streets around uh, the courthouse. Is that correct? Just a couple of parking spaces, probably on the Cleveland Avenue side. On the Cleveland, they're not going to have to do like they like they no. did. I remember there were several cars that were damaged. Just a parking space. He anticipates the parking spaces. So we, went, we went over that when he was last here. Okay. I was just questioning with the election and everything coming up, there's going to be a lot more people coming in and out of the courthouse voting. I guess they're still going to do in-person voting there at the courthouse. So. He just, he said, what, he, what he indicated to me was parking spaces. He had need a few parking spaces on the side to get a lift in. And then the other, the other question is the tax, the, uh, what was the exact amount of the tax bonds that we sold the revenue that we received from that we weren't expecting 70 was it around 70,000 I don't know the exact number 73 73,000 mm -hmm. 73, so where's the difference from the 84 going to come from what has repairs what do we have in that line item judge give me a minute I'll look it up Judge, while you're looking on that, just let me offer this general review to the fiscal court, and that is, uh, I've seen the one-page document with the four-part bid. I think the question there, any question related to that agreement, strictly a value-based question, and that is, uh, you know, are those values in exchange for those services and materials appropriate? I don't see anything there of a legal nature that raises any concern, so should you enter into that agreement, uh, I would say that I've, I've seen it and approved it. Oh, I don't know what happened. Printed on both sides of the paper. Court, courthouse, um, courthouse repairs has has uh, twenty nine thousand. It's got a free balance of twenty seven thousand five twenty five. I thought I was missing half the budget, and then I noticed you'd print it on front and back. Sometimes I was having trouble too. <laughs> <clears throat> So the, que the question is, is we'll have to take the whole $84,000 out of that line item. So where's that, what line items are we going to take that from to do that? Or I know at some point we're going to have to do a budget amendment, but this will probably have to be paid out before the budget amendment. So where's the additional 60 some thousand dollars going to come from? Because it's got to come from another appropriate line item to pay that bill. I'm I'm going to make a suggestion, even though I don't know that everyone will agree with it, but it seems to me that this is a project that benefits the community and it might be applicable for a community fund. Well, we've got the 70, what account was the $73,000 put in? We just transfer from that account to the other account and you're good to go. 
that's revenue, unexpected revenue. It's not assigned to a line item. But you still have to transfer it in and out. Transfer it out and transfer it back in and put it in that line item. It was just deposited into the revenue line item. I understand. It, it not included in the budget. It's kind of like the jail transfer. The cash came in, but you don't, you're not, we're not increasing any of their expenditures. Well, I understand that unbudgeted expenses come up, so I'm not going to let something live or die simply because we didn't put it in the budget. Well, I think we can work that out in the budget amendment when we get to it. <laughs> what about the <laughs> rainy day fund? There's certainly money in that. Yeah, but that's, if I'm not mistaken, that's cash. It's not going it, to, we got to find an appropriation to take it from. That's what I'm saying. Until we do a budget amendment or, or what mm -hmm. have you, because you're not going to have anywhere to take it from. You, you're going to have 30 to 60 days to figure out what you count. Uh, you know, if we don't get this approved, uh, you'll be late starting and late finishing and pushing to bad weather. So what do you want to do? I will agree that it doesn't seem to me that we necessarily have to pick which fund we take it from today, but I, I will go back to just basically the budgeting process in general and say that we kind of knew in advance there were going to be unbudgeted expenses, and that's why I suggested we have such large reserve funds available so that we could kind of stick and move when we needed to make expenditures. Um, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I, I would say I thought that I, I thought the or understood the reserve funds would be used for uh, when we, uh, as you say, pick and move to uh, uh, for emergency type situations or things that we hadn't planned on uh, that, that need to be done. And I'm a bit leery about spending this much money when we still don't yet know the, the full effect of COVID uh, and we don't yet have the money coming in from the COVID relief. So just to offer my thoughts. <laughs> okay, any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, I guess we'll have a roll call vote. All right, hold on one second. Master Graham? I'm in favor of it. Thompson? Yes. Constantopoulos? No. Blanton? Yes. Davis? Yes. Elkins? No. And Judge? Yes. Five to two, motion carries. Okay. Item number 17, consider approval of an order to re-employ Nova Risen as an administrative assistant at the Clark County Attorney's Office. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Again, Judge, this is retroactive, so I'm going to vote no since the effective date was prior to our meeting today. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. That motion carries. Mm -hmm. Item number 18. <laughs> 
consider mm -hmm. approval of an order to hire a kennel attendant for the Clark County Animal Shelter. Well, motion. Motion. Second. And who has that? Davis and Constantopoulos. Okay, sorry. They're quick on the draw, Michelle. That's right. <laughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion also carries. 19 on the agenda, <laughs> I would request a, a motion to go into personnel matters for closed session under KRS chapter 61.810F. Do you have a motion? So moved. There's a second. Discussion. Okay. Did everybody receive the link? Because I know the couple didn't receive the link. I just want to make sure everybody I got received it. it. I got it, but can't open it, Daniel. So if you can help me somehow. Okay. So, I'll call you. Can you call me? Who was yeah. the second one on that motion? I think Daniel was seconding without saying second. Yes, I got so. Daniel's first. Yeah, he said four. Oh, no, oh, Davis was, or was, okay. I guess so Elkins is first. Then uh, Constantopoulos was seconding for discussion, I thought. But. Oh, okay. I have it, but I'll call you if I have trouble. All right. Um, all those. Again to you. Anyone with any issues, contact Magistrate Constantopoulos. I'm sure you all have his number. Judge, if I remember correctly, we actually leave this meeting uh, and then Correct. and then open I don't the think meeting. Zoom will let you have two open at the same time anyway. But yeah, you leave this okay. meeting, and go to the other, and then return later. All right. Yeah. Do we take a vote? Yes. All in favor, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And we will now close for executive session.
Okay, let's see here. We're missing Travis. Michelle. Travis and Michelle. I'm here. Uh, just turn your video on Michelle, I guess. Okay, we now return to our regular session. I would like to move that the Clark County Fiscal Court hire Steve Asbury as fire chief, effective Monday, September the 19th, at an annual salary of $65,000. Second. Who is second? Several seconds. The 19th is on a Saturday. Oh, what's the Monday then? The 21st. 21st. Yeah. You told me the wrong day, Steve. Uh, <laughs> Judge, you might also, uh, after this question is considered, uh, note in the minutes that no action was taken in closed session. Thank you. Please add that to the minutes, Madam Clerk. Will do. So motion made by the judge, seconded by Magistrate Thompson. Any discussion? Judge. Go ahead. I don't I don't know all the details of your compensation plan. I'm just wondering considering our last um comp time uh, discussions whether or not that position was exempt or whether or not there, there's any such treatment to apply. Yeah, it, it is exempt from comp time. He is aware of that. And uh, I think that's pretty clearly covered in the admin code we passed earlier today, actually, County Attorney Elkins. Good. Yeah, the fire chief uh, salary was also covered today <laughs> at reading of the comp time. <laughs> Any further discussion? Yeah, Judge, I'd like to uh, I'd like to thank the uh, members of the committee, um, yourself, Master Constantopoulos, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Oliver, for the work that they did. It's been a lot of hours reviewing resumes and, and interviews and consideration. And uh, I, I want the public to know a lot of hard work went into that. And uh, we had several well qualified candidates. Uh, and and Mr. Asbury uh, was chosen by unanimous vote of the committee uh, to be recommended to the fiscal court. Uh, I'd like to thank the committee for the work that they did, and it was a pleasure serving with you. I'll like echo that. those sentiments as well as as I want to uh, personally thank everyone who applied. Um, it's amazing to me uh, how much you learn simply from doing interviews. And I think that uh, those of us who served on that committee all have a, uh, a more in-depth picture 
of our county fire department and uh, future leadership as well. Go ahead, Daniel. I, I was just going to say, I, I echo the, the comments from both uh, you, Judge, and Madden Shadowkin. It was a pleasure to serve with you. A lot of hard work went into it. Had a lot of great candidates. Very tough decision. And uh, I stand behind uh, soon to be Chief. Okay. So thank you all. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion does carry. <clears throat> all right, magistrate comments. Daniel. Uh, nothing at this time, Judge. Robert. Well, the good news is I didn't have any internet problems today. Got that fixed. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank whoever took care of the maintenance issues around the courthouse and I mentioned last meeting and I do have another one for this meeting. Apparently around the front door of the annex of the judicial center, whatever you call it, there's poison ivy appears to be growing up the columns and around at the side if someone could look at that. Um, and just want to make sure we have everything and looking as well as we can for October 3rd. Apparently there's going to be a Art Guild street fair. so. Uh, probably need to make sure we got things looking good for the visitors we have downtown on that day. Were That's they able to straighten out the, uh, I know that there were some issues with the health department and the numbers of people at that. Have uh, you heard the, the city, final? The city approved the street closures and the last I heard it was a go. So they, instead of just doing it on one block, they're going to do all three blocks and have things really spread out. So. It's going to go from apparently uh, Boone to Washington Street with just like 50 vendors. So with that much spacing, I they must have worked it out is all I know. Okay. Well, any step we can take towards reopening, I'm in favor of. Magistrate Davis? Nothing at this time, Judge. Thank you. Magistrate Thompson? A couple of things, Judge. First, I wondered if Michelle could give us an update on the election and how it's going to go and where it stands and... I don't know about everybody, but I'm in the dark on it. So I was just kind of curious. I've had some people ask me and I can't answer their question. That leads into another issue we're going to have. So go ahead, Michelle. Okay. So yes. So right now you can go online and request a ballot by mail. I just checked. We have a little over 2,300 people who have requested ballots. You've got till October 9th and that portal will shut down. Absent, um, uh, early voting will start here at the courthouse um, October the 9th. No, October 13th, I'm sorry, all the way through November 2nd. And then, of course, I have sent a request in for four locations for uh, election day, but I have not been uh, granted the approval for that yet. And with that being said, uh, I had talked to the judge. Um, you know, I'm going to have to have a spot to do all these ballots. And so I'm going to request the fiscal courtroom once again. My understanding from speaking with Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, is she will need the fiscal courtroom for the entire month of October through the elections and then what, a week after that? Is that how long it is? Well, I'm, I need to back it up. It needs to be probably starting next week for September. We, oh, are okay. approving, we are approving the ballots. As soon as I get off this meeting, I'm approving the ballots, getting that sent in. And as soon as I get it sent in, they are going to print them. As soon as they ship them to me, I need to have my processing team here to be able to mail all those ballots out. So fair to say, um, starting next Monday, two months. Correct. Is that about right? Judge, I would strongly encourage you to find some place for us to have a uh, fiscal court meeting face-to-face uh, -face during that time. Well, here's the thing. After the processing team gets through with the ballots, there's a chance, though, that we could have meetings still in there again, because my abs my early voting, I'm going to take my private office and convert that into a voting center, as well as the uh, records room that I currently use, because with the high volume, there's no way that we can do that in one small room. So once the processing team is through with that, then the early voting will start. Do you think we could still use the room in maybe October? Maybe October, yes. Okay. So we're going to be down to one, I guess we're going to do it like we did the primary, just one voting location? 
No, I've requested four, but I have not been granted the permission from the Secretary of State and the Governor. They both had to sign off on this one. What four did you request? I requested uh, Campbell Junior High, Stroh Station School, the Extension Office, and the Courthouse. I felt like that was four areas, four bullet points going each way. So all precincts are out? Yes. So I felt like four, you know, but if they take one off the table, I'll take off here, but I'm wanting, you know, I really want all four. Madam, Madam Clerk. Yes. Are they, are they going to have results on election night? Uh, I know they would be an official because I know there was some talk about that because I know it lasted a week and a half or right. almost two weeks. Are they going to try to get an official result? The election day is November 3rd, but they have until November 5th to get the ballots back to us, as long as they're postmarked. So unofficial, the ballot, they will be read, but we will have until the 5th to certify it. So I'm just curious, and this may be outside of anything you know about, is that typically what's going on nationwide? Because there's a presidential election going on. That would make me think we could potentially not know who wins the presidential election until the middle of November. You're absolutely right. <laughs> oh boy. So, just to clarify, Madam Clerk, if they if they uh, if we yes. have ten thousand mail-in ballots, I'm just using that as an example. We'll know the total from those ten thousand mail-in ballots on election night. It's just what's outstanding that can potentially come in. You are correct. Okay. Yes, we will read everything that we have from all precincts that are open or from all super centers is what they're going to be called, not precincts. Uh, and, and I should have clarified that. So each of these four places, if they approve me, wherever you live, you will be able to vote at any of these places. So there is no precincts on this one. They're going to be called super centers. Yes, we'll know the results that night of, of everyone that has voted so far. Okay. Any other questions for Michelle? Judge, do you need a motion to? I suppose it wouldn't hurt. I'll make a motion to uh, give the clerk the fiscal courtroom for starting Monday, the 14th. Okay. Motion's been made to Second. allow Michelle to use the fiscal courtroom Monday the 14th until she no longer needs it. Any further or unseconded by Magic Thompson, any discussion? Madam Clark, will you allow it? Will you let us know when we can, if it's possible for us to use the courtroom for meetings? Oh, definitely. Once the processing team gets through, I can break those tables down and maybe leave one table up I can accommodate it. I mean, that's that's the. I mean, I would be more than happy to do that. So I appreciate this very much. We can talk about it later, Michelle. But you could actually, it may not be a bad idea to just, if you've got tables, to leave them out anyway, because we're going to have to distance if we meet in person. So okay. Judge. Sure. We're going to have. Uh, if, if we're going to prepare an order on that point, uh, kind of it's kind of difficult to say until she no longer needs it. Have, All right, two months. Will you accept that as a friendly amendment, Daniel? Let, let's just, you want to be specific and give a date? Let's say November the... Uh, November, November the 6th. November the 6th. There you go. So you won't need it after the 6th? No. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Judge, I would just echo what Magistrate Elkins said. I would like to see us meet in person if at all possible. I don't want this this solely to put us back on Zoom. See what we can do. I agree. Come on, Joe. You love Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all those in favor, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion will carry. Thank you all. Am I back up, Judge? Yeah. Okay. Just a reminder about the jail committee um, and just a note, excellent job on the tax rate today. Um, I thought it was very reasonable. I appreciate your hard work on that. 
And just to say I'm excited about the dead animal and the potential to save the county some money there, but yet still have the service for the farmers, including myself. Great. Master Elkins. Judge, I uh, don't have a lot. I, I do want to thank uh, uh, Cheryl Wills for uh, taking over the duties as uh, interim treasurer. Uh, I think the next item on the agenda will will uh, correct that for her and give her back probably the position that she uh, really wants to be in. I know that she took that job without wanting it. Uh, she did it to help the county out. And I just want her to know that I, along with the rest of the fiscal court, appreciate everything she's done to uh, to help out with that need. So that's all I have, Judge. I echo that sentiment as well. I think Magistrate Graham's the only one we haven't had, right? Joe? Yes, I have no comments. Thank okay. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead. I have a back to what we talked about a little bit earlier. This is just a, a note from Addie about the potential days that they would need. Um, I'll, as the holiday schedule is currently is current, holidays <laughs> that fall on a Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, animal shelter staff are working a 40 hour week and being compensated an additional eight hours straight time for the day the holiday is observed. I'm requesting the alternative schedule to give staff the opportunity to have time off to work rest and spend time with their families. This would also eliminate additional payout for holidays. My request for the remainder of 2020 is below. Independence Day, Saturday, July 4th. Labor Day, Saturday, September 5th. Veterans Day, Wednesday, November 11th, no change. Thanksgiving and day after, um, Thursday, Friday, no change. Christmas Eve day, Friday, December 25th, and Saturday, December 26th. New Year's Eve Day, Friday, January 1st, and Saturday, January 2nd. This goes back to what Travis has mentioned and we talked about earlier. Um, I guess County Attorney Elkins, we need to probably devise an order. I'm not sure if it needs to be one at a time before the, meet, before the actual holiday or if we can do one order altogether. Um, I'm not saying we need to approve it today we should probably write it down and approve it later since July 4th is, right, since the next holiday is in November and it's not even one that's gonna change on this. But I, it is something I'd like to see addressed if we can. And I'll forward this to you, William, so you can take a look at it, okay? Um, Gary Epperson, Gary, are you available? Do you know if Gary's actually on there or not, Janet? It's showing his name. His name. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, I'm on another Lord. conference call with the CSEP exercise, which will be next Wednesday. And I'm talking with FEMA and Army and all the other CSEP counties and state emergency management. So we're going to knock that off. It's another big requirement for our funding you know, on an annual basis for CSEP. But but um, I drafted up a little letter, and um, I think some of you may have already heard, but um, uh, with both, I'm going to read off what I wrote up, Je wrote, wrote up Judge, if that's okay. But uh, with both excitement and some reservations, I'm announcing that I'm retiring as EMA CSEP Director and Solid Waste Coordinator at the end of this month. It's been a pleasure and an honor to work not with just you, Judge Pace, and the current fiscal court, but with four other county judges and many, many fiscal court members over the past 25 years. I feel like um, us working as a team with our city, county agencies and departments that we've accomplished a lot of good things here that have benefited our community. However, taking into consideration my age and I'm older than all of you guys put together, I think, no, Robert Blanton's as old as I am, but it's most of you guys, but, um, <laughs> but um, taking into consideration my age and I'm still in relatively good health, uh, I feel like it's the right time to move on to the next phase of my life. So but I'll still have my cell phone. If anybody needs anything, you can still call me. The only thing different is I'm gonna turn it off at night. I've been on call for over 25 years, 24 seven, and I'm gonna turn it off at night, if that's okay. But uh, it's been a pleasure, you know, working with all of you folks and, um, you know, I love all of you to death. I, you know, I, I think our county's, um, you know, a better county with um, all the work that we've done over the past 25 years. And, and um, that's, you know, really about all I had to say. 
Thank you very much, Gary. Thank you, Judge. <laughs> Chris. Okay. I, I guess that'll end my uh, magistrate comments. I can't recall anything else I wanted to speak about. Um, do you all want me to do the oath of office up here in front of the flag so you can see? That'd be good. That'd be good. good. Sure. Okay. Just say your name, okay? I, Chloe Alicia Mann, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth and be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky so long as I continue a citizen thereof, and that I will faithfully execute to the best of my ability the office of Clark County Treasurer according to law, and I do further solemnly swear since the adoption of the present constitution, I, being a citizen of this state, have not fought a duel with deadly weapons within this state nor out of it, nor have I sent or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons, nor have I acted as second in carrying a challenge, nor aided or assisted any person thus offended. So help me God. Oh, I do. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I'll now entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. We'll move. Second. Second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor, respond by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Matt, motion carries. Have a good day. I'll take care. Thank you.